every time that bus stopped, I wanted to get off and get and go back home. Mm -hmm. But I only had a one way, so I couldn't I couldn't go back. Yeah. And then he finally stops me and says, "Listen, man, um, I appreciate you calling and everything, but have your coach send me some film, and I'll take a look at it and see if we want to recruit you." I said, "Well, coach, I can't do that, man. I'm, I'm at the bus station. I need a ride." <laughs> right? He said, "Listen, I don't know why you came here." But I'm glad you did. He's like, you don't have to worry about anything. We gonna, we want you. On the same. That's life, man. Like that. When when I figured this out, this was my whole life changed. I mean, like literally. Once I figured out, I didn't have to wait for someone to select me, pick me, call me, whatever it is. Right. My whole life changed. I get on this bus. It's a two day bus trip. I'm scared out of my mind because I've never been away from home. Right. I don't have a lot of money. I'm on this bus. I'm going across the country. Now, it was a blessing that I had a one-way bus ticket because every, I don't know if you ever rode on a bus before or, or been on a bus before, but if, for those of us who've been on a bus, we know that bus is going to stop a million times, mm -hmm. like literally a million times before you get to your destination. Every time that bus stopped, I wanted to get off and get, and go back home, mm -hmm. but I only had a one-way, so I couldn't, I couldn't go back. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm trapped. Like I, I have to keep going forward. And this is this is kind of like a theme in my life where it's like when we put ourselves in a position where we can't go back, we do extraordinary things because we have no choice. It's, it's like, choice. yeah, I can't go back. That's really so, interesting too. Yeah. I feel like because I think for example, I mean, I that's a really good example of the bus though, because you cannot go back. As soon as yeah. you step on that bus and you have that one way ticket, you can't go back. And the farther you go to, the farther you get along with this bus trip. The more and more you cannot go back because you're always so far. Yeah. Because you, I mean, the distance keeps getting greater and greater, right? Yeah, it keeps getting greater and greater and greater. And, and it's and it's 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 a it's a really uh, fascinating idea because anything that we want to do, once we commit to it and not allow ourselves to go back, I don't care if it's your diet, I don't care if it's it's mm -hmm. your your business, I don't care what it is, right? Once you give yourself no option, I mm -hmm. cannot go back. That's it. It's done. Right. You you are going to ultimately achieve that goal. Um, and so two days on this bus, terrified out of my mind, make it to Ranger. Get off the bus, have to call the school. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm calling from a pay phone, call the school, ask to speak to the coach. Guy comes on the phone, has no idea who I am. I just started talking. Right. I'm Corey Jackson. I'm a basketball player. I'm a basketball I'm player. Board. Like I'm just telling him all this stuff. Right. I'm just I'm just going. And then he finally stops me and says, listen, man, um, I appreciate you calling and everything, but have your coach send me some film and I'll take a look at it and see if we want to recruit you. I said, well, coach, I can't do that, man. I'm, I'm at the bus station. I need a ride. Right. <laughs> and, so, and so the guy, man, literally uh, his name is Todd. He, 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 uh, he kind of goes silent on the phone. So I'm thinking the guy hung up. I'm like, oh, my God, like I think he hung up. And then finally, he says, well, how big are you? Now, at the time, I was about probably 6'5", 185. Mm -hmm. And so I said, well, coach, I'm 6'8". <laughs> so, so I already knew that there's not a college basketball coach in America that will leave a 6'8 basketball player just sitting at the bus station, right? Like, this guy had to come see. Like, he had to at least come see, right? So he says, well, if you're not 6'8", I'm leaving you at the bus station. He hangs up. I'm like, oh, God. You know, and so the guy pulls up, man, and, and he gets out the car, introduces himself, shakes my hand. Then he looks me up and down. And he says, close enough, you know. Yeah. And then, so he put me in the car. Now, I'm thinking in my mind, like, oh, man, finally, something's going to go my way, man. This, this is it, right? So we get in the car, and he says, listen, man, I have 25 basketball players. And, you know, most basketball teams have 12 to 14 players. He says, I have 25 basketball players. I don't have any room for another basketball player. He said, I don't have any scholarship money. Like, I don't know what you're going to do. He said, but I'm going to take you to the admissions office, see if they can at least get you into school. But I just don't have any room for you on my team. Yeah. So I'm like, here we go again. You know, like, that, that, like I'm thinking like, man, this is, I came two days, man, I don't have any money. I don't know what's going to happen. And so he drops me off and just leaves me at, at the admissions office. And I'm in there and I'm like, well, at least I can try to get into school. Yeah, they get me in the school. Obviously, they're like, oh, that's that's know. that's good luck, though. You got in. I mean, yeah, one, yeah, yeah. one thing I have question is, what was your family thinking at the time? This was whole, this was all going down. Like, your siblings, your mother, your 
like what was going on like what were they thinking when you told them were you just like i'm out i'm gone i'll, I'll be back with a million dollars like something like yeah, that yeah like like my mom my mom was absolutely not for it she was just like you know <laughs> You don't you don't need to go that far away. You don't know you don't know anybody. Like she really wasn't for it. She's a like she was a mother, mother. Like she just like wanted to like protect me. Um, you know, my my dad didn't say too much, but I felt like, you know, my siblings, my parents, they were just, you know, kind of like, man, this is crazy. You know, like this this guy is just gonna just leave like this, you know? And so to everybody that, even my best friend, cause I would try to get him to come with me. Yeah, your best friend and your girlfriend too. Yeah, like I, my my girlfriend came to the bus station crying. <laughs> uh, uh, my best friend, I told him like, like, you should come too. Like we can do this together. And he was like, well, you know, you you don't even know anybody. You're not even in school. Like, you're not, yeah. you know? Like, and so I was like, yeah, you know, but I'm going. And so everybody kind of was very skeptical because just because it was just so abrupt, like I just like I'm going, you know. Yeah. But were um, you known as a type of guy to be like, you were known as a type of guy to do this type of stuff in a way, or like everyone knew you had that mentality of you cannot be like the rest. Was that like did people know about that? And that's why they're like, okay, because I feel like for the average guy, like if some guy who works at Walmart, most people if they saw just some random like five ten dude go out try to get on a basketball team, like that's going to be really weird. But if you see like some yeah. six, five guy who's known to have this type of mindset and wants to play in the NBA badly, I think that would be more like looked upon as a better, like as, as good or a way. Like, what would yeah, people think I, of yeah, I think, I think people understood I had talent, um, but I'm from a small town. So still kind of looked at it as like, yeah, this yeah. Is, like, this is it, we, nobody from where we're from do this. Like, no, you know, like we don't really, that doesn't happen. Um, and so, so it was still kind of one of those deals. Um, but once I, once I got out of that admissions office and they got me into school, obviously they was like, well, we're going to have, how are you going to pay for this? Right. And I'm like, ah. <laughs> and so, and so I told myself, well, I have an idea, you know, how I can get everything paid for, you know, I'll, I'll come back and we'll get it all straight. I have no idea. No <laughs> idea. <laughs> so. So I um, ended up walking out of the mission's office and literally probably like a couple hundred yards away was a gymnasium. I could see it. Right. And so I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm just going to go in there and, and see what's going on. Right. That's for a job so, idea. so I walked to the gym, man, and they had the doors open. It's just, you know, this is old school, man. Old school gym. They have the doors open. I can hear the guys in there playing. I'm, I come in, sit down, watch it. And now this is back when, like, if you was a real basketball player, you always had basketball shorts on, like underneath your clothes, like whatever you had on, you had basketball shorts underneath. Like that's how it was like every day, no matter what we did, we had on jeans, joggers, whatever, basketball that's shorts. Really, that's really cool. So, so I'm sitting there watching, coach comes up and said, hey, the guy's just playing pickup, you know, basically free play. He's like, you know, next game, if you want to play, you know, go out, feel free to play. Mm -hmm. So I come out my pants, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm now I'm I'm two days on the bus, so I'm you know if you ride on a bus you just kind of stiff and you know. I just stiff. In my mind, I'm like, I just need to get out here on this court, right? Like this is my only chance. Like, so this is the part of the story that like just really like solidified things for me. I go on the court. We start to play. No one knows me, so I already know in my mind no one's gonna pass me the ball. You know basketball. Like if you don't know, like this new guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not going we're not going to pass this guy the ball. And so I'm on the court though for like 30 seconds before something happens. Our team gets the ball, a guy on my team, I'm like calling for the ball, like ball, 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 yeah. ball. He for whatever reason decides to take this horrible, awkward looking three-point shot, shoots the ball, and the ball goes like high in the air so I know like I was like, okay, I probably need to go get the rebound because he's not going to make this shot. Mm -hmm. So I start pushing it to the paint to go get the rebound. Ball's flying through the air. Ball hits the back of the rim, pops up. I run, jump. Now, as I jump, there's three other guys, like, battling me for position. So we all jump. Now we in the air. And, like, I'm just, like, in my mind, I'm like, I have, like, I felt like my life is going to fall. I have like, to get this ball. I have to get this ball. And, and so I'm reaching, I'm reaching, I'm reaching. And I... The ball was so high that when I got the ball, it was just my fingertips. I didn't even really like firmly grab it. It was like my fingertips grabbed the ball. Mm -hmm. And then just so happens, I'm directly in front of the rim. And so now I slam it back in like really quickly. Boom. And Did I'm you hanging. Dunk it on top of everyone. 
That's and I'm hanging, I'm hanging on the rim and I'm swinging and the other guys are falling down. And so when I come down, I look up and the coach is sprinting onto the court. Right. And he has like T-shirts in his hand. He was like, everybody stop. Nobody moves. Right. And so I'm like, OK. He said, listen, I don't know why you came here, but I'm glad you did. He's like, you don't have to worry about anything. We're gonna, we want sick. you. On the game. And that was it, man. Like that day. That's when like that dark cloud like removed because I couldn't see any way until like something good happened. Finally, something good happened, like after all this time. And from that moment on, man, I was just, I was locked in. You know, we were at a small junior college. We didn't have any uh, strength and conditioning coaches. We didn't have, you know, the best facilities. I created my own weightlifting program. I, you know, I was even training my teammates. Like I was committed. I was like fully committed. Girls wanted to date. I'm like, hey, you got to meet me at the gym. You know, Thank like you, this be. That was and, good yeah, like this was this was this was like I was so tapped in, Rohan. Like, like it was no stopping me. It was no stopping me, man. Um, that yeah. one opportunity, I just knew I had to seize it. 